Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry that you're being forced to watch by a chemistry professor. What are you going to learn about today? You're going to learn about cis and trans isomers. First up, we're going to talk about what isomers are in general. Then we'll talk about when you have cis and trans isomers. Turns out it's when there's a double bond. And then lastly, we'll do a bunch of practice problems so that you can identify things as either cis or trans. First up, what's an isomer? Well, isomers are compounds with the same formula, but different structures. So here we have C7H16. And on the right, we also have C7H16. Both of them have the same number of carbons and the same number of hydrogens. They have identical molecular formulas. But on the right, we have regular old heptane in one linear structure. And on the right, we have this crazy branch structure. So different molecules, same formula. That makes them an isomer. So whenever they have different structures, but they have the same molecular formula, we have an isomer. There's all sorts of isomers in the world. We're just going to talk here about cis and trans isomers. To start thinking about that, let's take a look at drawing 2-butene. So butane has four carbons, and the 2 and the ene ending tell us that there's a double bond on the second carbon. So I could draw it like this. Up, over, down, that has four carbons, and I need to add a double bond on the second carbon because of the 2 and the ene. So that's 2-butene. But actually, I could also draw it another way. I could draw it like this. Okay, now maybe you want to say, hey, those are actually the same molecule. Uh, they're just drawn a little differently. Well, they're very similar molecules, but the trick is, is that this double bond is really rigid. It does not allow my molecule to rotate. So if I get a molecule like the one on the left, then it's going to typically stay that way. And if I get a molecule on the right, it's going to typically stay that way. They have the exact same formula, but they have different shapes. That actually makes these isomers. And it's really key to having cis and trans isomers that the double bonds don't freely rotate. So here we have the same structures I just drew, but in expanded form. And this double bond doesn't rotate. So since it doesn't rotate, those are different structures. And it turns out we can give them slightly different names because of that. If these groups that aren't hydrogen are on the same side, we call that cis. If they're on the opposite side of the double bond, we call that trans. So here's the two names of these two compounds if we spell it out a little more fully. It's not just 2-butene, it's cis-2-butene and trans-2-butene. So when we name cis and trans isomers, we just actually tack on either cis or trans to the front of the name. All right, first, what's the formal definition then of trans and cis? Trans is large groups on opposite sides of the double bond, and cis is large groups on the same side of the double bond. And now let's work a bunch of practice problems where we go through and tell the difference between compounds to deciding if they are cis or trans. How are we going to do that? Well, here's the steps. We're going to draw a line parallel to the double bond through the molecule. And if the large groups, read their non-hydrogen groups, if the non-hydrogen groups are on the same side, then it's cis. If they're on opposite sides, then it's trans. And if they seem to kind of follow both, then it's actually neither cis nor trans. Let's apply this rule here with this molecule. So we're going to use a line going parallel to the double bond. So notice that goes straight through the double bond along with it. It's just like we start by drawing the double bond and then we extend it in both directions. That's what we mean here by this line that's parallel to the double bonds. And now we look at the big groups. Chlorine, it's up top. CH3, it's on the bottom. So they're on opposite sides of this line. Okay? And that means that they're trans. Let's look at another one. Here we now have a line angle structure, which can start to be a little more confusing, but if we follow the same steps, we'll be good. Draw a line parallel to the double bond. Cool. Now circle the groups. One group here, one group here. Okay, so one is on the left-hand side and one is on the right-hand side. That means, again, we have a trans molecule. All right, next example. Now we got a huge structure. And lots of people are like, whoa, I'm freaked out, that's huge. Well, go ahead and just follow the same rules. Draw a line along that double bond. Boop. That's not the best line along the double bond. Let's do that. Okay, perfect. And then we circle the big groups. Guess what? That one's above the line. That one's above the line. So since they're both above the line, that makes that a cis isomer. Here we got a crazy molecule with a number of substituents hanging off of it. Follow the same steps. Line going through the double bond. We got a group here, a group here, and a group here. All right, notice that this CH3 and this CH3 are on opposite sides of the line. So that would seem to suggest that it's trans. But 
this chlorine and this CH3 are on the same side, which would seem to suggest cis. So since we have some sort of clues telling us cis and some clues telling us trans, this is actually neither. So this molecule is not classified either as cis or trans. So we say this one is neither cis nor trans. All right. Now uh, let's look at another long linear line angle structure. We'll follow the same steps. We'll draw a line through the double bond and then we circle the molecule that's hanging off of that double bond on either side. Notice that they're on opposite sides of the green line, one on the left, one on the right, and so that once again is trans. Okay, last problem, we're gonna actually identify this as cis or trans and then we're gonna name it. First of all, is it cis or trans? Well, we draw a line through the, CH, uh, the CC double bond and we see the chlorine's above, the CH3 is below, and so we know that's trans. So this is a trans molecule. Now let's name it. That turns out to be not totally trivial. Let's count our carbons. We have one, two, three. And this is the correct numbering. If I numbered it the other direction, the double bond will get two and three. We always want to give the double bond the lowest number. So that's good numbering. And we'll notice that we have a chlorine group on the first carbon. So we're going to start the name with one chloro. And then we notice that our, uh, that our double bond is on the first carbon, one. And then because we have three carbons, it would be propane but because it's a double bond, we'll change it to propene. So one chloro, one propene is a good name, but now that we know about cis and trans, we can make it a little better. And the way we do that is just by tacking trans on the front of it. So it becomes trans one chloro, one propene. Okay, so that's the best name, trans one chloro, one propene. It's the best name of that compound. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry, even if you were coerced to do so.